Mark? Adam? How are you, my friend? I'm wonderful. How about you? I'm well. So, uh, obviously, you're all over the news, first with this whole uh, Nike business and then on the Jesse Smollett thing. Now, I'll just ask you about the Smollett, and then you tell me what you know yeah, or what you me, can I'll speak of. I'll start with Jesse because I'm so, um, I'm so irate about I just Somebody just sent me the link to Rahm Emanuel's uh, press conference, mm-hmm. which was an outrage. I mean, the state's attorney stood up and dismissed today. 16 counts. This guy, I, you know, it's, it's hard to understand how somebody in Chicago could be railing at the top of his lungs at the state's attorney when he and the police chief are an abomination to begin with. And, um, and he's worried about the state's attorney doing what they thought was the right thing. Um, I, I would just venture to say, I don't think this police chief has is long for his job is my my humble opinion well he can um, get back to his first love ultra marathoning <laughs> um <laughs> so well, look- you know the the i it's just astonishing everything that he said at that press con demonstrably true there wasn't even a, any credible basis for it in the discovery i mean it was just it was so divorced from reality. I don't even know uh, where to begin. Well, and when my- somebody somebody takes a sober look at it and understands that, in all probability, this looked to be um, something where somebody got out ahead of their skis and forgot about the first few of a criminal cases. You need corroboration for uh, for somebody supposedly telling you a story, and you know that's. It was what I was complaining about early on, and it came to pass. Well, Mark, everyone is asking what happened, why did they drop it? So in your, in a, as succinctly as possible, why did they drop this case? Well, in my humble opinion, I, I, um, I don't ever speculate on prosecutorial motives or anything else, but the discovery was turned over, and the discovery, in my humble opinion, did not support um, their theory, number one, and it certainly did not support from an evidentiary basis um, the idea that he engineered this. Everything that was contained in the discovery, um, to the extent that I can talk about it, um, supported the, what I said early on. They got a whale of a case against the two guys, but that's it. Uh, so I think most folks, just taking a cursory glance at this, assume that the outcome of the actual events remained the same, meaning Jussie Smollett colluded with these guys and sort of cooked this thing, but the police force screwed it up so badly in the process of trying to prove that that they had to drop it. I don't think that's the case, because I think that um, if that had been the case, they never would have dropped it. I think they came to the realization that this thing was cooked up while two people were sitting in custody, and then uh, they got uh, way out over their skis. So I, I honestly do not believe that he had anything to do with it whatsoever. So you believe, I mean, it's your, I shouldn't say believe, it's your understanding that the two brothers did this on their own? Correct. And that's why they dropped it? Correct. Now, I, I don't know if we're going to be able to convince most of America <laughs> that that's well, I, how it works. I, I get that. I mean, that's what was so infuriating about this thing, is that there was a certain tax that was taken um, initially. I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting um, emails and tweets where people are so convinced of it, not having ever seen any evidence or anything else, um, not looking at one single piece of evidence but just based on press conferences that they they've worked themselves up into a lather is so what is in it for the two brothers then were they just thugs roaming the streets with the bleach and a noose i i have um, a speculative very speculative theory because i've never met them um but based on what i do know i've got a theory which 
will be unveiled on Reasonable Doubt, which will Whoa. drop this Saturday. Wow. That is wow. a huge tease. I shall be all ears. but but and I, and I hope you know, as per usual, I will have to ask you the medium to s- softball questions. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, real quick, now I mean not real quick, but I was marveling at the beginning of the show that Avenatti's bond was three hundred thousand dollars, and Lori Laughlin's bond was one million dollars. Is there any? I wish I, I wish I could that? comment on that. I'm more, um, and I maybe on reasonable doubt. By then, I'll also um, talk about that as well. But as far as as far as Avenatti and that case and what happened yesterday. I can't. I can't get into it yet. But I uh, maybe by Saturday I will. Do Do you feel secure? I do. And and yes. and confident. Yes. Okay. And I do. and CNN dropping you. Does that? Now that's now CNN dropping me. I'll talk about all day long. They ought to change the name to the Cut and Run Network. <laughs> I uh, you know I've been texted by all of their anchors who are as outraged as I am that after twenty years. Um, a press conference is enough to have them uh, immediately want to disassociate themselves. And God forbid that I start telling some of the stories about how I've covered for that lame-ass organization. Well, <laughs> oh, geez, here they come. The here they come. Uh, well, what... Uh... I mean, I, I was talking to Mike August about it last night, and he was like, uh, CNN... Drop Mark Garagas. I was like, how can they drop him? They don't even know anything. And it's like, that's they enough. They know nothing. They know nothing. Well, a, like, maybe that's a better uh, call it CNN, the Know Nothing Network. <laughs> well, <laughs> they shouldn't do that. I, I mean, my my feeling is like not as a as a fan of anybody. It's just why not just wait until you hear something and then Mike says they can't take that chance and I go what chance? What chance? They're not going to be faulted they're going to go I don't know what happened it's like a house burnt uh, caught on fire and then you yell arson from across the street and the fire marshal's got to go no no we got to inspect first before we can do that we have to see what's going on you'll not be criticized well, my favorite part is is my phone has been blowing up by their bookers and their anchors all today trying to get me back on to talk about Jesse Smollett. So there's, a, there's a delicious irony to that. And I, I think I responded to one who will remain nameless. CNN's not exactly in my top ten list. Is Was there a pre-existing condition, Mark? You know, you can be abrasive. I mean, were they, was there a reason? Were they looking for a reason to get rid of you? What? Were they looking for a reason to cut ties with you? Like, it seems so abrupt. I've never seen anything quite as astonishing. But, you know, the, there, there, was, there is a part of me. The direction that network has gone in um, is not something that I'm real comfortable with. So uh, I don't know if they – I don't uh, – I would say that there, there was no – pre-existing uh, reason because they re-upped my contract um, God, I don't know when, maybe less than a year ago and wanted and wanted to make it multiple years. How easy is a wrongful termination suit on your behalf for something like this? I mean, there's so many lawsuits I could file on behalf of myself. I, mean, I could file against HBO and Leaving Neverland. I could file against CNN. I mean, if I had nothing better to do, I could be the most litigious guy. Right, instead of the second month. Who's your way? The first is an well, entire law firm. Well, this is the difference. I don't consider criminal to be litigious. You know what I mean? I think that, that you know somebody's indicted or whatever, and I'm attracted to that for for other reasons. So. Well, I'll tell you, you could probably find a home uh, over at Fox. There's a whole new world order where, like, Donna Brazil and a lot of folks are, like, jumping ship mm-hmm. and crossing over the aisle and going to going to another network. Well, let me tell you something. Um, for all the grief that Fox takes from, uh, from everywhere, I will tell you that as recently as two hours ago, three hours ago, when um, the dismissal was announced, uh, so maybe longer than that, whenever you listen to this, uh, the Fox 
people that I talk to on a regular basis and the production company who I have spoken with numerous times could not have been more supportive, could not have understood the presumption of innocence any better. I mean, it's really a, an exercise in contrast to put CNN versus Fox in this situation, where in one situation a guy was actually charged and indicted, meaning there's a probable cause proceeding where, that somebody did, and Fox uh, stood tall. And then in another one, there's nothing um, except the press conference and CNN ran for the hill. Yeah, I, 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 again, I'm, I'm confused, and I wouldn't look, look, if CNN gave it 72 hours and then shit can Mark Garagos, I wouldn't judge them. I'd say they had to process some information, and I'm sure they wouldn't after 72 hours, but if they did, I wouldn't look down upon them. I, I don't get what the knee jerk is for everyone just to cut ties with everyone immediately. Yeah, um, before you know anything. But, you know, it's, uh, it's uh, I suppose, an opportune time um, to do it. So, it so it the Avenatti I, thing, the Avenatti thing, you can't talk about, but you feel... I really can't. I really can't. Good. I mean, given given where, where, where it's at, but I, uh, I may be able to talk about You can talk a little more when I see you uh, on Friday, hopefully, for uh, reasonable doubt. And then... Uh, the Jesse Smollett thing, you will unveil a theory. I will. I'll unveil the theory on next episode of Reasonable Doubt. Hi, Gina. I haven't heard one aside. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. We, we miss you, and we're so happy to talk to you. Can I actually, can I ask you one quick question? Since this has been... uh, Only if Paul uh, tells me he's going to give me another pair of socks. Uh, You're in the mail, buddy. One more pair. Um, on the, I've been listening to a bunch of different news radio today, and in terms of Jesse Smollett, they keep saying, well, look, he already did his community service. He forfeited his bond or whatever, and that's if he was going to be charged, he would be given community service, and he already did it. So it's really just sort of a logistical thing, and it's really there, there's not a lot more to read into it. Does that does that jive with what well, you know? Well, yeah, how you feel? I mean the. I was surprised when they, you know, when talking about it, they even asked for California, um, you lose it as a matter of right. I mean, you if you post a bail bond, if you don't get the, uh, that was before the new no-catch bail law, but you're in the, for the last 35 years, would pay your 10% or sometimes less if the bail bond, uh, after the bail bond uh, community uh, fought the 10% rule, you pay that, you don't get it back. No, right. so, I mean, that wasn't anything that seemed to me to be out of whack. I mean, you pay the – his bond was 100 grand. He put up 10 grand. So you don't get that back in California. Illinois, they've got a sliding scale is uh, how I understand it. Lori Laughlin had to put up 100 grand because her bond was a million dollars. Nuts. <laughs> well, that was in that. federal, so they probably did some kind of a secured property bond. Federal is a lot more civilized. Reasonable doubt every Saturday with yours truly and uh, Mark Gergos. All right, Mark, we'll drill down more on all this stuff. Uh, well, I'm this happy weekend. to know that I still have a job at Reasonable Doubt. <laughs> oh, yeah. Best hour in the universe. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Corolla, Corolla Digital. Thank you. Thank you. I was worried about him for a minute. That's what we call a good get.